lecture in such and all usually it doesn't make sense but there are eight people studying in the directors can, can we close that door when everybody enters i know there's a set there of my of my crew i think everybody's here is this translated yes it is jesus christ of course i i would like to welcome you on the next day of um i don't know which one uh, on the workshop where i am for the first time and i'm really impressed because it's a totally different way of uh ed film education and uh, a bit different a bit smaller stop talking if you want to talk go outside i was in i was invited to give you a lecture which in my case was uh um, I would say very well grounded because I'm a lecturer in the uh, directing department in a film school in Katowice. On the other hand, uh, teaching in the institutional form uh, seems an aberration in the film industry from, from the outside because I feel making movies as something very individual. So every community or every group makes you operate in stereotypes, uh, things you've heard, uh, thinking about every project that i did in every cooperation where it with the actors or the or the members of the or the crew and the students every relation is individual and uh, um, non-repeatable uh, to such an extent that even when i worked with the Jacek braciak uh, i had two uh, two cooperations in a very short period of time um for example cruel uh, Cruel and uh, so there are no traces. The king and the, so there are no traces. Uh, he played in both of my productions, and it the, we it was sort of in parallel, um, uh, the same actor, but the way of of cooperation and the preparation for these roles were totally different. Which, on one hand, shows shows you the beauty and the uh, uniqueness of uh, this artistic activity called filmmaking, as well as. Uh, and I think this is the more difficult part, which for me is a certain driving force and uh, is that you're uh, you're always a beginner in everything at all times. Right now, I'm already at the end of a production of a movie called Mingu, which will be the first uh, movie which is contemporary and which is not based on true story in any way. And it is not an adaptation of a book or is not inspired by a book or etc, etc. And this, um, as I thought, I thought in the very beginning that this will be an experience which will be simpler in a way. Now I can tell you that the level of complexity was similar, but this complexity was in, and, and, and well, the, the level of difficulty was showing in different places. Let's make an assumption. I will start to talk. Initially, we'll start with a case study of uh, The Last Family, but also the film about Przemek. If you have any questions, please uh, um, voice them, because I, I could be sitting here and, and uh, babbling away for seven hours, and I just would like you to get something for yourself, uh, something that would resonate with you um, and would give you something. We have a microphone in the room. Is it working? It's working. So let's make this assumption. I'm not a great uh, proponent of a formal lecturing. So um, if you would like to ask me something or change the topic, please mm, tell me. Let me mm, start from the beginning. I will, won't tell you the whole story of my life because you probably know. I will tell you where did the movie uh, The Last Family, well, how it appeared at my table and where did I make a movie about a family of Bekszynski. It is either very short or a very long story. The very short one is version is that I got a script that I decided to be a very promising and very interesting and worth of uh, filming and possible to film like feasible in terms of filming oh, the long story is that uh, 
I saw for the first time the exhibition by uh, Beksinski when I was 12. Uh, we went to Sanok to, to my mother's friend and we went to the castle to to the gallery and I saw for the first time his pictures. I was interested in art already at that time. I was a fan of Dadaism and Surrealism and I thought when I saw that uh, that uh, the Beksinski's images, I said, wow, we have something like that in Poland too. Beksinski was not my favorite painter um, at any point or the most important point in my life. However, it was one of the authors that I, um, I, uh, I respected, but Malczewski was also uh, such, an, such a painter. And both the Beksinski were live at that time. When I was a student, I started to think that maybe there is a topic in this. As around that time, Zisov Beksinski was murdered. And at that time, every second uh, student of a film school whom I talked to wanted to tackle this based on, based on what super experts or another tabloid wrote about the story, making out of the tragedy of a green painter, they make this this horrible smear, the tabloid smear. And it, this context really hit me and it stayed with me until today. And right now we have a totally different world and totally different problems. However, at that time, because my uh, current wife, uh, the then uh, a girlfriend, her family is from Krosno, mm, which is near to Sanok, I went to, to Sanok to meet with director Banach. He was the director of the historical museum in Sanok. Mm, so the, 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 main, uh, the main heir of the uh, Bokshinsky's heritage. And I started to talk to him. He wasn't very happy. He was a bit reluctant to meet me. Out of that, I got this be belief that there might be something there. I don't remember. Uh, I met in. Uh, I don't remember the sequence. I think uh, first I met Łukasz Arbitowski, who at that time was not a very well-known writer. He was. It was difficult to analyze his. He he was doing more of science fiction uh, rather than what he's writing right now. And we had a great discussion. Um, we we still keep in touch today, but we didn't get the right vision about this topic. But I think after the next uh, visit in Sanok, I decided that there is something interesting in it, but I'm not interested in biographical movie about the painter. I thought that this makes no sense. A few years passed. Meanwhile, I uh, I graduated. I did a documentalist course in Vida School. I made a documentary in Munk Studio. In Within the Cycle, the first documentary, I made a 30 minute movie as a, like my first thir short form. One one project moved to another, led me to another. Then I made a, a, a d document diplo, which which was key in the decision process in terms of the last family as a, as a movie. And when when I was whether I was finishing diplo. I, I decided we were nearing uh, the anniversary of death uh, of both of uh, Tomasz and Zdzisław because they, they were f dead five years apart and we could come back to that. And then I made something, did something that, uh, that was absolutely um, uh, embarrassing. I, I write Zdzisław Beksiński in Google, I got Wikipedia and on the Wikipedia page it was written that Robert Bolesto wrote a script uh, the last family which was in the competition in the final of the competition Hartley Meville so today the, 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 it's named script pro the most important script competition allegedly in Poland when I met Robert Bolesto I met him because Kacper Fetaj the, the DOP I'm working with he made before that hardcore disco uh, it was his uh, DOP debut and hardcore disco Krzysztof Skonieczny wrote a script together with Robert Bolesło. So this is how this was the, our link. So Kasper recommended to me uh, the Robert who, with whom I will certainly not come to terms with. And that was one of the few moments when Kasper uh, was not right. Hope, thankfully, there were very few such moments. And when I met Robert's uh, script and I met, I met him, I, I saw that he wrote something that is totally different from what I felt. Uh, concerning that family, he saw 
a family. I was thinking only about Zdzisław and the perspective of Robert and the perspective of this uh, uh, script was such that um, he started out many years before to, he wanted to write a, a theater play just about Tomasz Beksiński, inspired by the great feature by Wojciech Tochman about to, uh, Tomek. And this evolved into the script and the script then went through many hands of many directors and uh, producers and nobody wanted to undertake that even though everybody was interested interested they were all afraid that the big controversies surrounding with his family and surrounding Zdzisław and the deaths and that there is some risk there and also the copyright to painters and all their heritage uh, a bit later we agreed with the producers will make it will be doing this we had this discussion which I cut off very quickly shouldn't we do it based on um, on history of Wyksinski but maybe about a fictional family so this is all a bit uh, fictionalized I didn't want to follow that concept. I said, if we don't get the rights for Boksinski's uh, image uh, paintings, it all doesn't make sense. And I think it was the right decision right now. It was an inter interesting spin-off. Do you remember Body Ciao by Małgorzata Szumowska? There is a scene which is inspired with the, um, uh, with the with the inspection of the uh, of the apartment of Bukinski after the crime, it was quite. Uh, it, it sort of made me laugh because it's uh, in the same. It it's actually in the same uh, um, uh, district. I was after Diplov. It w we got a lot a number of um, awards in Krakow and abroad. And I felt ready, even though when I was in a school, I promised to myself that I would. I swore that I wanted to debut earlier than Orson Welles, so I didn't manage to do that in twenty when I was twenty six. Which I think it was, um, it was a very good decision because I would make a horrible movie, and I, in this way, I did something a bit better. And I can lecture you about it right now. I was in at the moment when I was looking for a for a text, and uh, Robert Robert's text was one of the several. I think at the same time I was talking with a different producer and a different scriptwriter on another text which we didn't know if we will be bringing that together or not. I decided that I want to make The Last Family as the debut because I knew that this movie has a big, much bigger chance that it will be realized. I think that this approach, a very pragmatic approach, is very important in that, that work because regardless of which professions you represent or aspire to you have to be aware that it's not possible to do everything here in poland it was a bit different at the level of the 2014 2015 when we were getting prepared to the movie right now the realities are different let's not get into that because it's it's a story for a different discussion but um for a different moment but after the preparing the f preliminary budget of the first family of the last family we knew that it will be higher budget than the average debut in poland but this movie was about six million finally at that time the the beginner budgets were four four and a half million thanks to the dexterity of our producers mm, and cap capacity capabilities of our producers who are very young company because i started to work with aura film uh, Aneta Hikinbottom and Leszek Wodzak who joined later uh, Aneta joined later as a co-owner of the company they were after the first two small documents one about Lutosławski the other I, I didn't see that at all and they were already in post-production or mm, filming already Carte Blanche with Andrzej Hira uh, which premiered in 2015 in the first part of the year I think so it was a sort of a um, risk for me. I'm telling you about all this because um, uh, referring to the title of this lecture, Shaping uh, um, Individual Artistic uh, Message, it all, th these all elements are, br br you know, are combined to b together um, in deciding what can be done, what cannot be done because of the fact that uh, already at that time for many for several years i had an agency which represented me uh Zart by uh ilona ziłkowska and boris Slavik at that time and i had a partner to to talk i had a text robert bolesto was uh, convinced that uh, we can work together 
that was uh, supported by my buttress by my movie Deep Love, which Robert saw before, and he liked it, and we agreed on this. And the selection of a producer was an, still an open issue. It was uh, I didn't I, I didn't have a producer that I had to sort of follow or I, th I thought I have to choose. We had like three movies on our um, in our crosshair. Uh, we are talking about Vuerde, and Vuerde at that time was m m making the lure. As you probably know, Robert wrote also the script for that one. So I got signals uh, from how things work in that set. And then I decided uh, I would like prefer to go with a company which is younger. Um, aspiring and less conf self-confident and but w from which i would feel a, a lot of drive i could see their charisma and the willingness to do something uh, exceptional with our f during our first discussion with leszek bodzak i learned that this is a man who's from a totally different industry because he used to get uh, EU money for small and medium uh, companies. He got experience in building fina financing for different things, and he decided just because, as uh, he's an enthusiast of uh, of uh, of cinematography, he decided to move his experience to cinematography. I liked it a lot because I uh, I felt that he has a very non stereotypical way how filmmaking could be done. And yes, indeed, uh, basing on the things that we did uh, and other um, directors. And Aurum, I know uh, the structure of financing that he's thinking is totally innovative. Magnesia by Maciek Bochniak was the first movie which got uh, uh, um, uh, which got uh, tax rebates in Poland and and um, settled them. It was also a time of for the end of uh, uh, of directorship of Agnieszka Jodrowicz in uh, in the Polish Film Institute, and it and many people who decided they will not be in expert uh, commissions, they decided to be in expert commissions. So the heads of uh, commissions at that time during the sessions, I um, I think we uh, we submitted to Wojciech Smarzowski, but also apart from him, there was Juliusz Makulski, Michał Rosa, Agnieszka Holland, Xaver Żuławski and Jan Komasa. I had this feeling that when we were submitting that um, if they rejected, then at least I would not have a feeling that it was rejected by, by nobodies. It's very helpful. If you follow the story in uh, expert commissions in peace, uh, you will see it was not always that rosy. It was also a time when uh, Żywałkowska's book about Beksiński was released, who first uh, brought new uh, renown to both Zdzisław and Tomasz, and this uh, sort of uh, b th this gave birth to a f wave of projects about both Beksińskis. A lot of things were created when we were submitting uh, this to piece for production. Uh, there was a second competitive project, full feature about Beksiński called. Pars Pro Toto, and out of that, Monk made a short movie. It's interesting. Please, uh, I, I recommend you to watch it. Jerzy Rawdziewiłowicz plays him, and it, he, it, it's presented in, the, in a totally different way. I always thought before making a film, and especially after making the movie, that um, if somebody doesn't enjoy uh, the presentation of Bekczyński in my movie, there are plenty of other things, like there are books, there are f f f short films, uh, and documentaries and many other publications that will allow you to build a different image. I mean, I'm a great fan of the publication of the publication of the short stories by Zisław Beksiński, which show him from a totally different perspective. Uh, ex if you want to make a feature film about Be Beksiński, I think showing that relation between him and Zosia from the 1950s, when he was taking her pic picture of, of her, which were very radical at that time and quite controversial, that it's a potential topic. I would never make a movie like that, that's for sure. Uh, you don't enter the same river twice, of course. Do you have any questions? There has to be microphone.
Yeah, yes, can you hear me? What was the title of the script by Bolesta? What is already the one? Starting from the very outset, since I got that script, it was called The, the Last Family. In Wikipedia, in Wikipedia, the title was already there. I think I never asked Robert if he ever had any other title. I consider this to be a fantastic title and I still think uh, I, I didn't change my mind because I got the, to the, one of the definitions. The title should be the short, the shortest synopsis of the movie at the same time telling nothing about the movie. And this title fulfills this requirement and it's very, the last family sounds very good in English. It's a catchy phrase. It, it sort of, it, it reflects well the core of the whole story. Robert always thought that it's a, a bit of a non-dramaturgical story. He didn't want to get bound to this three-act structure and all the traditional elements that you should have in a script. To the extent that he didn't define or he thought that the script does not define who is the protagonist of the story um, and we did have a bit of an argument about that this translated into that that in terms of staging i knew that that the uh, protagonist has to be zdzisław and for me this is a story uh, about how zdzisław loses control what he would like to control because his son wants to commit suicide which goes beyond his system of functioning and as a result, I did it by staging. Even by reading the script, when reading the script, the, the, so the, the, pr the production script, I, it doesn't show that Zisław Pekszynski is the protagonist. Of course, you can have this feeling that Tomek, Tomek is on equal footing as a character, and Zosia Bekszynska is a very important, but here you can look at it from a different uh, perspective of knowing all Konieczna's creation and what this film did to Ola Konieczna, that she became a very famous person. She was a no-name at that time, so quite naturally nobody was interested in this. To such an extent that I think, I don't know if you've been here with Aneta Hickenbottom's lecture, she reminded me that uh, our distributor at some point tried to attempt to put somebody else in that role to cast somebody else in that role somebody with a, with a bigger name yes uh, sorry we can hear you no, sorry. so this is an element which uh, evolved uh, to the whole process I thought that for many years I had this impression, I had this feeling that being a fan, a movie fan of Michael Ammon, for example, I'm a great supporter of uh, Michael Ammon, not everything, but for example, the, um, the informers, uh, mm, uh, I, I felt that I will have to start with an action movie, a, a crime drama or something like that. Right now, when I'm sitting in before us, I, I, I made two movies that are exactly the opposite of this. The Last Family is uh, the reverse of who did it type of movie. Mm. I could do say the same of my second movie too. I didn't change my will. Of course, I will not debut with it, but I would love to make an action movie such like the Clint Eastwood, the um, reverse secrets, or I don't know. Um, the hostage, for example, by Amon. And uh, I remember that moment when we started, well, in the pre-production of the movie. I knew that we will get that money from PISF. Uh, there was a good flow around this, and I kn knew that we have to get prepared for the production. And there were two big issues or two big topics which didn't leave my head. One was the cast. Who will play that? And the other one was the 30% that I would like to change in that script because Robert's script was at, at points it was beautiful, interesting, uh, and but it has a lot of postmodernizing hue which I was not interested in at all with all due respect to postmodernism uh, represented by the cinema of David Lynch. In Robert's script, this postmodernity 
mm, was reflected in that there were plenty of scenes which were a sort of a repetition or variation or or a, a relation to the films that Tomasz Beksiński loved. So uh, there was ground for this. However, for me, these were scenes on one hand uh, um, with uh, unnecessarily flashy because for example there was a sequence uh, a very interesting sequence Andrei Severn when he was reading that script he was he was really sorry that we wouldn't shoot that when the whole family is um, dressing up as the characters from the movie uh, the spider woman there was a I don't remember the the title well one of his favorite movies the whole sequence was inscribed into the last family it was supposed to be a sort of a amateur reshoot of was what was there in the movie of course it could take place in that house because plenty of things could take place in Beksinski's um, apartment but for me I saw in this uh, text the opportunity to make a movie about a family from the out from the inside and suddenly Beksinski as a name was not important for me I knew it is the best documented family in the world probably and going through the tons of materials it was a heavy work but also a great pleasure because I never before I never before I met with such an amount of uh, source materials about one single family including also materials which were of uh, artistic or creative character because undoubtedly the way Zdzisław Beksiński operated camera in his house from the very outset since it ha he had it it wasn't just like your everyday home spun video I remember this moment brought to I think it was with Kasper Feta he brought a selection of materials from vid vid uh, home video by Beksinski to, to show what was in, what, what inspired him etc because when I read the script I immediately wanted to verify where all, all these things were because I knew that somebody would try to question me or interrogate me on where I took them from so he showed us the best of those materials and what what struck me what i didn't realize when i was a young director already but i didn't realize i didn't think that what Baksinski painted rhymes well in what he sees outside of the window when Baksinski uh, moved when Baksinski family moved to Służew of Nandorinko district in in in, uh, in warsaw there were just blocks of flat and a lot of the rubbish rubble around th around um those chaos there was no building um, just one uh, rental just one uh, video rental it wasn't even there I'm talking I'm saying that on the day when these buildings of, of land uh, um, uh, f um, commercial center will be demolished there similarly as already the, fa the favorite McDonald of Zdzisław Beksiński had was already demolished too doesn't matter I remember that we were really shocked with Katzper that uh, there, this, uh, the, there is a sort of a rhyme and this was one of the elements how we wanted to tell this story as I said before I was not interested at that time I was not interested in biographic bi biographical movies um, uh, about a painter. I had we had this moment uh, uh, a film by uh, Mr. Turner by Mike Lee. Uh, we went to see with Casper. Um, we were sort of it's a good it's a good director, but uh, this film was not really very captivating. We're slightly tired with this with all the, the all the answers to which Mike Turner said yes. We pr probably. Um, we answered no. I was not interested in the creative process of Beksinski, how he painted, where he gets his inspiration really. Mm, rather, I felt that it's much more interesting to show that house or uh, the, these apartments rather as spaces where this art is present, that it's hanging on the walls. And also the film ends that this is the only thing that is left there are only uh, paintings that are left from him the fascinating thing in the history of Beksinski nothing remains uh, th there's no heir Tomek had no ch children and uh, 
the closest family is um, I know very very far away cousin of the cousin so in a way they they, they were wiped out wiped out from the surface of the earth and that's why um, the title the last family uh, is a very good title thankfully Robert had uh, an approach to this script which was very sort of loose and open uh, so relaxed and open because he wrote this for years the last version the one that I got from him was dated 2006 and me 2010 well uh, certainly this was lying around his drawing for some time he didn't pick it up that was his first full feature script that he wrote but in the uh, during the time that it was lying in the in the drawer, he wrote hardcore disco, the lore, and something else. I don't know the, if the heart of love was not already somehow s uh, in the making. You have to ask him. So I met him for the first time. He was he was quite a resigned guy. He didn't believe in the possibility of um, of filming that anymore. For him, it was already old thing. You know the. Um, Think in the past. So when I when when I gave him uh, the certainty that he will work on it, he reached out for it and he wanted to introduce changes. He wanted to verify it. In a way, he rewrote it from from the beginning, uh, or he looked at it at the fresher with a fresher eye, which I also treat as uh, one of the key moments when w in working on this movie. Because thanks to that, I I could suggest more things to him, and he didn't want to. Uh, discuss with this he just preferred to, to verify this of course there were things um, to which Robert didn't want to give in for example the sequence in which Zosia Bekszynska had uh, her teeth corrected and there was a, a, a pretty hardcore sequence with orthodontist uh, from the mm, uh, with the w with a ca with a camera from the perspective of of teeth i mean i saw that but in the in the cartoons in the simpsons from the perspective of the tongue so you've seen the, the picture and you know that in terms in terms of style it's it, it would be f pretty far away of what i wanted to achieve however we had a very good and um, fruitful cooperation also later because uh, robert was present partly on the set he wasn't there but also during post uh, synchro and post production he, uh, he <coughs> because uh, i really wanted to keep to his vision and to to um, because i have a lot of respect to the work that he did and that was one of my key things um i say that it's as, as the first one because uh he sort of uh, he went through like tons of acts in the in the court for example from the uh, uh, murder case of Bakshinsky. Uh, he was sitting there for ages celebrating all of that also in the in the museum in Sanok. also when we started to prepare ourselves to the movie uh, it occurred that there is a problem that his relation with the, Bana the, the director Banach in Sanok is n was not the best so we had to rectify certain things do you have any questions because i can talk for for years i can but i can talk about whatever you like to hear was was the, was the PISF commission satisfied no they weren't they were happy finally because they made past unanimously that will give me financing but i remember our discussion about ola konieczna because nobody knew who is ola konieczna did you uh, i would say concretely in terms of dates because i i checked that leszek wodzak saw deep, deep love in krakow in 2014 so this is the end of may not long not, not a long time later we met because he wanted to meet me but also my agent contacted me with him so it was in june 2014 the first session production session when we want, could talk about production because the development system looked a bit differently at that time we had this feeling because the session was in in august that it's too early that we will not be able to prepare this package and we wanted with the, with the debut and with the relatively young producer without a lot of experience we wanted to submit something 
uh, that will be relatively flawless. And when we submitted this project to uh, in a session, well, no, because the sessions were moving to the next year. So I think it was until the end of November and the session was in February because it, it um, coincided with the date of, of birth and death of Zdzisław. So we knew we, 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 can, we can submit a really solid package. So this included, among others, the documentary with proposals of the of the cast without any decision because i said that we can make a casting um but we have to sit and go through a lot of uh, archive material with the with the actors so that we can we can be sure that they can create that family this is exactly the expression i used i didn't want to sort of uh, question this them to question the selection of individual actors but i wanted the the, the three people's team to work like a family and that w i'm very happy that we were so convinced and i kept them for half a year i um, i kept them until the end of april um with the in 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 i mean didn't i didn't give them the proposals of the roles i didn't cast them only at the moment when we in the process of preparation and documentation and maybe acting uh, acting rehearsals because it w we did it parallelly there is a discussion you have this discussion midway between Zofia and Tom Tomek where Zisov enters it's like a very s long static VHS discussion it's one to one a discussion which is recorded in audio uh, initially Robert wrote this in the decided to put it in the car but for me this scene was uh, inscribed in the uh, in, in the car but 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 finally they, they were I decided that it Vizdzisław knowing a, a bit what sort of interlocutor he was that he would not speak for such a long time uh, so after a longer analysis it occurred that rather this discussion took place in the apartment and Zdzisław started to record it earlier and then he, at some point he entered the dis discussion altogether this discussion was about two and a half hours long it was transcribed so we could we got this document together with the mm, uh, with the recording from uh, museum museum in Sanok I I was listening to it when I was driving a bus bus from Sanok and we were shocked how open and honest and direct this discussion is and uh, at that time it was um, I think it was April already I proposed that the actors would sit and read this whole discussion they knew that this that it is there but what that will be but they didn't have a time to get prepared and this was a moment where we met there was Robert for sure Jan and Leszek and Aneta and Andrzej Severin, Olga Konieczna and David Ogrodnik and they read through this whole discussion and they started to play by themselves I'm sorry we didn't record it but because that was the moment when they really created that family and they really got together got glued together to to the extent they could but at the moment of submitting at the end of of November the documents we were we had uh, test shots prepared with Andrei Severin and with David and with Ola but it it was so that with every two those roles we approached it differently I mm, I knew that David Ogrodnik who after who was after his two big films uh, including Pacto Pactophonica he was like uh, uh, he's the best choice but it's too I decided it's too obvious and we have to cast somebody else and I'm really glad that I had this stance I had this approach and uh, and we g went through all the potential candidates for this role where we were looking very broadly on this because we had Piotr Piotr Gutki Piotr Gutko Albert Ma Rafał Maćkowiak was there uh, many people and it was similar uh, with the with the role of uh, Zosia. Eva Bakalarska was 
uh, such as so offering se several solutions. I had several names to test out. Uh, some uh, experienced, well-known people. And I felt very sad when I realized it was one of the big, big w those first big castings I did that the actresses whom I uh, expected a very, very concrete propositions came with something uh, much lower than the level that I would require them, taking into account their, their, their f um, achievements. I don't want to drop names because it's uh, a bit awkward and there was a moment when Ola Konieczna came and it was sure and we knew oh, I could see immediately that it was a totally different league in terms of quality and at the second stage of the test shots and rehearsals I will tell you about the the, the, the Gisuaf uh, because it's a totally different situation Andrei Severin well He took part with uh, with testing. Oh, the, the, David Ogrodnik was sort of playing, uh, sort of testing out with five other actors and with uh, with the, uh, double the number of potential Zofias. I will tell you which which scene we were testing out. We were rehearsing the part with between uh, the scene between Zofia and uh, Tomek, where Zdzisław chimes in. There was a scene where Zdzisław breaks into Tomasz's uh, apartment it's almost in the beginning of the movie and with Zofia we had a scene with uh, with the washing machine and I think something more I think each of them had the one of the three scenes at the end of the day when I was already equipped to in the knowledge that this is how it works I made a decision that um, Ola Konieczna and David Ogrodnik are actors who will most probably play these characters. With Severn, it was so that, you know, we started discussions from the uh, role of Zdzisław and very quickly we stumbled upon a big problem, which later when the film was released, uh, nobody says it is that the, it takes place over three dec decades. So we have to have actor or actors who will be credible in case of Zdzisław as a 40 year old guy and the 76. I don't remember, Let's, they were like 27 years so of, of, of a difference. Initially, I was thinking about actors who are around 50 And quite quickly, after the discussion with the makeup artist, we said that it is risky that making this makeup, this, you know, we are not exactly uh, masters in this respect uh, as a Polish industry. And when I saw Jack Strong, for example, we, who has the latest sequence, this, um, and it was not convincing for me in, in, in terms of makeup. And we started to. Uh, look for things in a different way. We were talking about different, various di different actors. At some point, when we were talking about them, um, we heard the name. We were thinking about them. I was thinking about Leszek Bocak as a producer and Eva Bakalarska as the casting director. And we were thinking about, we we're work talking whether we should talk about something, we should see someone, test them out. Mm, rehearse them and we we're looking for materials from early casting so that they didn't know we are interested in them uh, I think th that was the most that I was getting to, I was in theaters uh, at that time uh, in my life um, sometimes incognito I remember that early late evening or early in the morning I was thinking I thought I thought why wouldn't it be Andre Severin what were his advantages of other other actors first of all he he was 68 at that time, so you could have, and he was in such a good, sh in, in a good enough shape that you can make him younger, and that you will, uh, you can pull it off on the screen. Apart from that, I I really um, wanted to avoid the situation when uh, Robert Winskiewicz will grow Robert Beksinski. I wanted the actor to be fresh, and Andrzej Severin paradoxically gave that to me because at that time he was of um, 15 years, uh, it, it would happen in, two, in the year 2000, he, he, he 
pa played one major role and two major roles only. Uh, and it was already some time since since that time. And and the cinema was not very interested in Andrei Severin. He had like the secondary roles, etc., etc. But he was not so well established in the minds of th of the viewers. And I also had the f this feeling that I can give him something which will move him in a into a different place. I was warned by many people about his about his sort of bronze-like or monumental nature and very uh, big technical skill, but many people. But he said that that he, his roles are very good technically, but there is no soul in that. But when this when when we heard when people got to know that uh, uh, Andrzej Severin will play Beksinski, there was quite large number of people who said I killed my film from the out outset. I understand you have a question because you got you took a microphone. I have a more of a DOP question because it's a very small place. How did you manage to shoot in such uh, narrow um, spaces? Did you have like uh, technical problems from the uh, cinematographical point of view? Uh, we had the whole plan. First, we, we wrote it out on storyboards like scene breakdown and then uh, and then the, uh, and we also had cinematic we recorded the all the di the dialogues of with m uh, protagonists and we edited the storyboards from that point of view that was very helpful and uh, before that i started from the from the middle and let now let me move back uh, this uh, film takes place into into flats into it's the topography was known th thanks to the materials which were already released the, the, those that you can find on the internet although i don't know how it is right now um, at that time they were illegal but they were functional on youtube so you could define what was there uh, you had to refer to this on the uh, as the film takes place over 30 years there was never a serious discussion on shooting in original in original in, uh, interiors or as Leszek wanted to do with Pacta Fonica, that he wants to do it in real places. Now, here it was uh, not real because even if we entered the flat of Bekszynski, uh, which then occurred would to be impossible, then on the other hand uh, we will have 2015 outside of the w on the other side of the window and not 2003. So quite quickly we d decided together with the set designer and with the production that we have to build this. And out of 37 shooting days, we had 24 shooting days uh, in ATM in the production hall, uh, making small but very important from the point of view of, uh, of production changes. I don't remember very well how it was, but I think the, the, the apartment was proportionally increased by about 20 percent so to make the camera fit everywhere because from the very outset it was clear because that was the uh, that was the assumption at the moment of submitting uh, the motion to PISF sorry the application to PISF that the film will be made in such a way that every scene will be one long mar master shot um, uh, handheld uh, technically demanding this impacted for uh, among others the change that we introduced in the uh, house of Zdzisław and Zosia we took down we took down the mirrors because if you it, it made shooting impossible they made shooting impossible because you you would be seen any from anywhere with a camera having this knowledge mm, about the layout of this uh, apartment because you knew only the archive materials but we also made a very detailed documentation we became specialists how the district was built how these 
uh, how these apartments were built. We had the layout, um, the top-down layout, we, and it was very helpful in constructing the story. So once the, when, uh, when this um, apartment was designed, we had an impact on what you could have, you, what you could change. This impact translated in, into 3D um, layout in the catch-up, and we were moving around with the cursor, with the camera. I think we could find the right angles. And where you could, we could see, uh, we could foresee the problems and where we should move the the walls or we should have holes in the wall. In Tomek's apartment, these rooms. When you enter this this apartment in the, in the movie, the doors are at the same at at, at the same level, but they, they were s shifted in um, in uh, the original apartment, so you couldn't look from one. Um, from one uh, room to another and that was the biggest change from the original apartment because I decided the camera has to be pretty far away with a longer longer lens it has to be certain uh, um, peeping that we ha and we, we did tests on the, on the wider lens and it wasn't good at all the performance of all of these scenes which um, took place uh, between the between the uh, the apartment blocks, uh, between the apartment blocks of of Tomek and uh, Zdzisław's and Zosia's flat, that was um, and a big problem because Służev and Nadolinko doesn't look as it used to look in 1978 or, or 1994. So we made a very quick analysis of what we, how much it would cost to to uh, dig up the whole. The, the the whole um, district and close it for two months but well, no, just for informative reasons because it was not feasible of course we had to support ourselves with post-production thankfully Kasper Derkac uh, I work with him as a DOP for a long time he's a great fan of all sort of things related to post-production there was a moment years before when he was dealing with adding uh, uh, the adding post-prod into Antichrist by Lars von Trittier and he's very aware of the tools that could have been used then and now which is very helpful with building the language and the effective and constructive discussion on what you can do and not do uh, was still within the six million zlotys budget as a result the district was created in a in a green terrain in Constantin Jorna on the on the meadow on the neck on one meadow we, we've been um, filming a part of a of a plane disaster on the other one we're building that we were building that uh, um, um, district so we decided we have to build everything that we have about 10 meters from the actors that are, that, that are there it, it has to be physically there on the meadow everything everything further can be done can be generated in post-production just when lightcraft heard about this they they were terrified because they decided it was a compl completely horrible idea and uh, there were a, a certain there were several things in with this movie the, for example the, the the plane disaster made it with one shot it was an upset for them uh, the most difficult part was preparing this uh, preparing this um, uh, district because w the scene when they're still entering the still unfinished flat of Tomek which would have 360 degrees camera handheld so rendering that would take do dozens of hours and we were standing over the postport makers because they were mm, a bit careless um our production our cooperation was a bit a bit bumpy uh, i don't want to delve deeper into that that here it, doc it occurred uh, uh, there is a making of in the light uh, on the lighthouse website i think it was somewhere on the internet uh, at some point uh, we showed this produ material to the producer of Martin Scorsese. She couldn't believe that we did it with this budget, which was, of course, a great, a great praise for us. From 
from the from the point of view of cinematography i knew casper very well because we made several etudes in the school uh, several several commercials but also uh, deep love the and uh, we have a lot of respect to our cooperation and we know what we can do with one another casper knows how to get into my directing booth and i know how to get into his cinematographic booths and we are in a, a sort of a monolith so uh, you know we, we generally are uh, uh, inseparable because we work so uh, employing us together is a, is a saves a lot of time and and money because we know exactly how to work together casper already made two movies he made hardcore disco which was a movie made on deep off like gorilla shooting of and but he also made a movie uh, a bit, it was a bit of a flop but it was a good flop uh, uh the, the a man unnecessary unneeded from now uh, this was not a very good movie but these were his I'm thinking from the point of view of cinematography. Do you have uh, some concrete uh, questions of some concrete scenes? Then I can tell you. Okay, then we have a question there. Hi, I wanted to come back to the feasibility of the movie because you said that what can be is what which things can be done in Poland. Uh, is it only about the budget or also about other con um, factors? Well, the budget is the point of departure and the final problem. However, our cinematography also, what I feel, uh, what I'm trying to change in the film Spring Open and all, all other places, we do have a problem with developing the pr uh, filming professions which have been developed in other countries already. I'm talking about, for example, CGI and the awareness of where you could use special effects. It's also the um, awareness of the, st of the stunt uh, of these stunts professionals, how you can realize certain things. We also have, which arises from our history, a certain division. Uh, the, you know, the, the the DOPs have more impact on the uh, on the um, setting. Sorry, uh, on the setting that uh, that uh, they should have, uh, which I try to combat, and Casper understands this very well. Uh, every movement of the camera in the last family which is uh, which is which is late by a, a fraction of a second uh, changes to completely the scene and makes it uh, unusable with us the level what you can do in pre-production is very limited or there is not much will on that because I do remember a discussion that we want to make a stylomatic. When I said the producer that we that there is something like stylomatic, they said it's some sort of nobody nobody does it. Okay, I said nobody does it, but everybody should. And then it occurred that it's a tool, which is great. You can't use it with everything because the, the last family, because uh, the majority film of was most made into um, interiors. Uh, you could make it. You know, they were they were not some sort of dreamlike things, but they were very realistic. But we changed several scenes because of what we had in storyboard. But uh, the cost of making a stylomatic are storyboards. I really recommend storyboards as a tool, not for yourself. But it's a great tool for communication with the crew because I and, and the DOP know what the shot should be. And it, when you're making a more mm, complex scene, it's very difficult to describe it without the storyboard. So, and then you waste time to get to what things should look like. And stylomatic requires, apart from storyboard, the with the, the editor to be engaged, uh, which I really recommend to do in pre-production because it's very useful later. Well, with the movies I, I did recently, I also had um, the editor um, engaged at a very stage, a bit differently because it's a different project. However, the editor is very interested in editing something like that because they, if they are able to uh, edit anything before shooting anything, it's it's stupid, it's it's foolish not to use it. 
we need a full audio, which in the case of uh, actors, when you don't have a big cast, you can do during the rehearsals, assuming, of course, you, have, you should make a rehearsal of reading the whole text from the beginning to the end. And bringing this all together gives you very concrete information. From the very outset, it impacted the re-editing of the, of the movie because it occurred that certain things are too long, certain things overlap, for example. Also, if you have a stylomatic, uh, uh, you get sort of, you reflect, bounce your ideas or reflect certain, your view from, not only from text, but also from images. And it's very helpful later because the editor does not put together everything from the, from the outset, but re replaces storyboard with concrete shots. Uh, and this is how it was in with The Last Family. You have plenty of tools like that. And I do have a feeling when I see the final effect of certain movies, but also knowing the fact how productions ap uh, approach this and talking to other my colleagues, whether professional colleagues or DOPs, I do feel that there's too, too little of that and, and it doesn't generate some crazy uh, cost items. We also, uh, with The Last Family, w we did the cinematics for the effect scenes. There was an animatic for the uh, opener scene, moving from one uh, building to another. And it was needed for the, for the need of the, uh, for setting this, camera ten uh, sorry for for building anything from for 10 12 meters perspective from the actor so we, you know we started from green meadow so we had to measure everything and also what we did was um, well in reference to the to the to the plane we made rehearsals of the shot inside the plane uh, with with the stunt people in the bus so that we could make uh, the uh, the at the uh, rehearsal of how he people behave uh, during the, for example, breaking. I said there's no option that we would take Polish greats extras and that they would pre pretend pretend that the uh, the plane shook. It maybe it worked in small and skewed work for me. I remember that it was quite funny that our plane crash was seen many people. Uh, it was seen by more people than the than the plane crash in Smolensk. The scene, mm, the plane uh, crash scene, which were the the element which which the producers wanted to get out of the of the of the uh, of the film because the cost was very high, and we were talking about many different options. There was no real possibility to make it on pneumatic um, uh, jacks because we would not be able to get it would not cost us more than the whole budget of the movie just to follow this one scene so we're looking for a good polish cheap way which would be safe and uh, i f from the very outset it was even before i submitted documents to peace first i knew that we have to have this scene of plane crash because the guy who tries to commit suicide he su survives a plane crash the the level of irony uh, was always sort of turning me uh, sort of uh, uh, was always very inspiring for me uh in the very beginning due due to the fact that in the piece of documents there was an uh, appendix on the on the com on the combined work between the dop and the, with this with the uh, set design and CJ, which we would have to lose, uh, which, which and the CJ, which they would have to be used, we had to very precisely think about it, and w we had it in storyboard, of course, in sort of so, some sort of a description. But if if it was, if Aka when Akatsar act asked how we were to shoot it, he, I said we have to do it in one shot because we have to be with Tamek at all times, and it uh, caused a lot of problems and uh, and um, generated a lot of jokes that we will not be able to do that in Poland. We managed to sort of uh, defend ourselves pretty well. It was the first scene we came up with that has to be in one shot. And from this, we we had that, I mean, uh, we decided that every cut, sh it should be a jump in, in, uh, in time, maybe minutes, maybe years. This gave this movie uh, quite an interesting language, quite consequential. You 
despite this um, span time span of 20 over 26 years a very important thing with uh, a very important element was music with the last family and the music i knew that on one hand that Tomasz Beksiński was a, a musical encyclopedia and when I was listening to his uh, I came back to Cat Stevens after listening to him because I I discovered a new solo um, solo um, uh, albums of Roger Waters which you can't listen to anymore for other reasons and the Moody Blues came back to me so there was a lot of that all that is happening uh, in the movie it is uh, it's pretty easy to identify because ultra box blue uh, was in the disco because it it, it refers to a certain uh, mo very concrete moment in the life of Tomasz some of them were our um, they have to the, the thing that Tomasz is listening to, and there are plenty of them, that it has to sort of resonate with the state that Tomasz is in, and these have to be things that I'm able to, at least in some part, I'm able to listen to them. So this Gothic music that Tomek was fascinated with at the end of this of his life, uh, it was not in the f film because I couldn't bear it. I made this this creative decision because Zdzisław Beksiński was listening to, uh, to a lot of music, he was listening to Black Sabbath, but he listened to a lot of um, classical music. And I came to a conclusion that it has to be simplified because that brings about the new level of conflict. If Zdzisław is listening just the classical and Tomasz comes with some new rock or pop or new romantic sound without naming that, it we have a certain... There is a scene in the movie which I like a lot, in which Tomas enters a walk with a walkman. He's listening to one song. I don't know what's then the background. I don't know if it's identifiable, whether it's a rock music with the who, who's, who, uh, who has uh, he's, he's listening to to Mahler and Dvorak when he's painting, and uh, the grandmother she has a radio, and all together. It sort of intermingles, and I remember that for me that was a scene when I ha felt that it's a bit like in every house, especially, especially when you come for for Christmas. Everybody represents something else, listens to something else, and it's something you know. It's it, it's some conflicting a bit. Uh, there's a bit of cacophony, but it has to uh, uh, compare. Okay, it's quarter to one. Uh, I mean, if you have questions, you can ask me. I have. I want to come back to this production issues. Uh, did you submit some rehearsal shots uh, when you uh, submitted the application? Where did you enter the set? We didn't apply with any video material. That's because, thankfully, the producers were in, in agreement with us. If we suggest these actors, we we they have to trust us. I do not recommend to anyone entering the discussion with the expert committee who decide whether a certain actor basing on the rehearsal is would be good or not it's not their competence they're to do something else we also um, got into a uh, into a fire because another project about Beksiński uh, had Jerzy Radziwiłłowicz as Beksiński And there was some nightmarish discussion among in the in the com among the com committee uh, with us present, who of them is a lesser evil of the two actors. And I was sort of many years ago, and I still feel indignant at this because this was totally unjust for both gentlemen, regardless of whether they would be good to play Beksiński or not. But you know their uh, their um, achievements are unquestionable and I still feel a certain distaste after listening to that discussion we also have to apply for financing 
and we had a different post-production company included in the uh, oh, f which made a revision of their budget and the and the budget that they submitted was about 430 zlotys, thousand zlotys and after they uh, they went to Służ of Na uh, which is in Mokotów between Mokotów and Ursynów in Warsaw they changed the budget to million seven hundred thousand and I remember about this until to this day I don't know if that was within the application I think we had a Mazov uh, film fund HBO because HBO was uh, doing co-productions at that time and there was the one and only of a kind and that's the genius of Leszek Bo uh, Bozak uh, the, the one and only cooperation in with Universal Music Polska because they entered as a co-producer and then with the music with some of the part that I know they give money um, all it was just uh, in kind but they support us a lot And I think Lightcraft. Uh, that was our the post production company. So this financing it was well documented in accordance with uh, with a very solid project. Which from this point of view um, does not leave place for doubt. I was really happy that we not only got the money but also the information that this was the best project uh, submitted to peace from the point of view of all um, uh, documentation not only the artistic potential but everything around it because for me that was also a proof that it's worth to do more to get people convinced to you what was the second part of the question we got the money it was February 2015 I don't know if we assumed from the outset that the uh, the shooting will take place in the autumn and we had two days of like mm, f f the final days of the summer in the in the beginning in the in the half of the of the Ju July so and we uh, we shot pictures in uh, you know in uh, in elevators so we were sitting for the they were sitting all the, the whole day in first in July inside the elevators for the whole day very boring and the main sh main set started in, on the 28th of September and we finished in in the middle of September I believe we had to finish in September because uh, Ogrodnik fell ill we had um, a shift at the, at the end for about three weeks and the film was edited uh, in in the spring quite quickly we thought at that time that we would make maybe get to Cannes but at, the, at that time um, we stood no chance already from the perspective of time I think we still made it pretty quickly but when we started the main shooting time the, the period the the actors were prepared to roll to the roles for about a year already which was a big upside it's not uh, well the selection of Severin Ola Konieczna and David caused that Andrzej Severn, who at that time was the director of uh, Polish theatre in Warsaw, could um, sort of set his agenda in such a way that well, he didn't play in anything in the theatre, I, su I suppose. Ola and David at that time were g getting away from Rozmaitości theatre, they were playing only in uh, uh, Męczennicy, uh, Jarzyna's Męczennicy, uh, it was it premiered in 2014 when we got to meet and they had only like a few days 
of playing and then like uh, they, their their mm, uh, calendars were clear they had no big film stuff so this allowed each of those people to enter that world in a very consequential way you never like f uh, head first and i suppose i supervised this but on the other hand i left them a lot i support i s encourage them to to work independently because everybody works in a different way on their role. I think we also had a distributor there. Uh, I think we had Kineshvat as a, as a distributor. Good. Listen, last chance. A question. I would like to come back to the scene in the in the plane. How did you solve this dull conundrum? It's interestingly uh, it's, uh, correlates with film Spring Up and Gavo, who's in my group, uh, uh, admitted on the first day that he was an extra in that scene. That scene, even though it looks like a one shot, um, was shot in two different places on two different days, separated my two months first which was very um, uncomfortable we made an opener thing so what happens from uh, getting uh, getting uh, moving Ogrodnik as uh, from uh, uh, sorry Ogrodniks walking through the curtain to the end of the plane and the second one the first one which was which was much more difficult as a result we shot it in uh, in Zerany where there was it was built on the on the lorry a part a, a, we built a bis piece of a of a of a, um, of a, of a plane we were driving around the obstacles on the road and it so depending on how it shook we had to add or to remove the obstacles we filmed it only because there was no frost in the night because if there was frost we would be ne never able to to finish it but the shooting itself was like a combination of Mission Impossible in Poland uh, with Polish means. Th and that's how I remember it. Because we ha we had to be, you know, there were like explosions inside. Everybody had to be fastened. So people who were inside, pe some of the people were actors. The other ones were extras, extra some of the crew. So it came from ex ex excitement to, to, to total panic. And we were also shooting that as the last, one of the last scenes. So the moment of finishing of the of the filming set was at the moment when Przemek Khrushchevski, who was editing the movie, who was on the set, got the material already downloaded. He added it onto the previously added second part of the shot and confirmed, or I confirmed with him, whether it clicks together, regardless of whatever was happening, uh, of, of what was to, to happen in that shot, happened in the way we wanted. It was called the second part of November some horrible time when it comes to entourage so, well, I don't know well now I would not want to repeat that I would prefer to do something else but later when uh, when we were preparing the king uh, we referred to that lot. I mean we made a we made a plane crash in one shot we can do that too and that convinced many people it doesn't convince me but uh, it did convince uh, other people quite a mobilizing phrase um, but i must also say that i being uh, raised on the uh, vhs uh, rental houses with r rentals with uh, with van damme with the uh, chuck norris uh, with uh, bruce willis i'm uh, i i'm always a big prom proponent to have at least one scene in the movie which is technically a um, uh, a challenge because it's it's great fun i was uh, i was rejoiced like a small child when we were doing vataha and we were to burn uh, 70 people fight of you know in a in a stick fight you know burning the refugee camp uh, uh, during the winter minus 15 degrees in Bieszczady. but it is so that then this is like a real adventure then and 
make no, leave no trace which was made during the pandemics was also a great uh, adventure the scene in in the mm, uh, palace in sorry in the castle square we had to make this huge green screen closing down the the, the castle square in warsaw uh, seemed to be impossible but we ah because we made a plane crash in one shot in the last family we can do that of course we could of course there was one um, restaurant owner who didn't want to get off uh, to to get to to remove his table, so um, because of him we could have failed. But you know, that's the magic of the cinema. I wouldn't say the it, the more difficult the better. The more difficult, the more interesting. And I think the the method for such a thing. Uh, I don't want to sound trivial, but. Um, uh, facing uh, future problems if you if you know if, i mean if, if you're just reading the script and you can see that he was arrested in the in the um, castle square you try that two months before the shooting in a development talking about other people when we had the decision that we starting with the production on the first day we we, we were reading the script with a with this um, crew for me it was a difficult um, experience because uh, for most of the question science I still don't know I still don't know um, I will see I still don't know but the engagement of the crew and here it's I think the the prop man or costume designer um, getting them into this this whole endeavor at this point allows you to create a certain feeling of community that we're doing that too together and that's key with all this uh, from the very outset you can find out find what will be the biggest problem and if you have half a year before the uh, before the shooting, you can still manage that, and you can you can solve or avoid the problem or change the script. With Ningun, I I changed the the the, the main protagonist. We changed the place where they where he lives. Initially, it, it was supposed to be a contemporary residential district, which also played a bigger role that it finally has. At the end of the day, he works in a in a tenement house, and processing that they, they takes time. And that time is is cheaper and best in pre production. And I think that in the very beginning, when we make a decision, and Aneta was talking about that yesterday, I think it's not about whether the text is worth filming, but whether it's possible to film in Poland. Whether, will you find money for this? Will you find the, the film technology to do something like that? We have more and more technologies on Film Spring Open. We have presentation of many, a lot of different things. When I think about AI, I do I do feel my, my um, stomach contract, but I do feel that it it can have an application it also there's a question about convention about style the the thing that you mentioned how we will be making a certain movie it's much easier to talk about the, the pro production process when you have a script or a realization concept um, this equipment uh, list etc like the the VHS, vhs scenes we have to record on a vhs camera but we have to have a backup etc etc so I think that in our circle of interest, in our uh, uh, small group, which people pre want to call the film industry, we can save ourselves in such a way, finding the right uh, trick to do that. And I'm not by trick. I'm not uh, saying that we can. We have to cheat people, but or ourselves, but to to make something work on the screen. With every project, we made uh, we made rehearsals so that there are no like don't leave uh, um, leave no trace. We made half of the makeup for both of the carriers, and to our great astonishment, it occurred that there is a huge huge difference between how makeup is made for for the. Uh, for Ola Konieczna on the on the tape and and on the digital because it didn't um, uh, didn't work well together. These are not things which require a lot of cost, a lot of uh, time. But I think that really three fourths of a movie 
is made before you enter the set. If it's different, you're condemned to uh, to luck, to randomness, uh, f which I hate because uh, for me entering a set is a, an execution of my decisions. Okay, I think one third of you is starting to look uh, at your phones. So I think it's time to finish. Yeah, all the times. Unless you're looking at transmission. No, it, I don't think it's, it's five. Okay, guys, if, the, if there are no more questions, thank you very much for this epic participation in the lecture, which I thought will be more intimate. I'm here until the end, until the Wednesday, so f Thursday, Thursday, yes. I will be third until Thursday morning. So if you have any questions, please, uh, you can always come back to me. Thank you.